Welcome, folks. Appreciate you coming out to join us for today's Beanstalk DAO meeting. Um, I think at this point, everybody's pretty familiar with the format. Of course, we keep this pretty easy going. If anybody has any questions, they can drop them into either the Barnyard chat or the chat in the Barnyard voice channel, and we'll do our best to capture everything and make sure that questions get answered, etc. As always, lucky to have a bunch of the devs joining us today as well to talk through anything specific that they want to cover or, or answer any questions that, that, that are asked that, that they seem like they want to, uh, to cover. And yeah, without further ado, we'll start whipping through the slides here. So big items up front. So everybody's aware of the ongoing votes. So we've got uh, BIP43, Hypernative, and BIP44, which is seed gauge system, both up for vote. And then temp check 3, which is the unripe stock burn temp check, is also up for vote. Um, so just a reminder for everybody here, I'm under the impression that everybody on this meeting has probably voted already, but just in case you have not had a chance to, um, head over to the government, governance page and vote on all three of those items. We definitely appreciate it. I would appreciate it. And then for upcoming and ongoing items, really it's two, two ongoing items. So right now we've got uh, Wrap Steve and the H1 upgrade package now an audit. So those items are currently being looked at and the uh, schedules will reflect that. And uh, yeah, we'll start looking at projects unless someone's got uh, anything they want to add. So to take a quick look at the, the project funnel, so not a whole lot of change since the last meeting. Um, only two items that immediately come to mind. One is one is the addition of Podburn for time lock assets. I saw that come up in the Beanstalk ideas channels, and I think it's Safi that was is is frontlining that and leading some discussion about that. So I wanted to make sure that, that made it on the slide. And then the only other change since the last time around is since Hypernative is now up for a vote, I took that off of, of this page because it's being covered elsewhere. Actually, I shouldn't say it's being covered elsewhere. So it's covered in Discord. Uh, we don't have a slide on it here. The information that's in Discord is really the best source of information. It's not really a project per se. So there isn't like a timeline of ongoing work. So just for everybody that, that might be listening to this later on, yeah, the best place to get information about <clears throat> about Hypernative is the BIP43 channel in the Beanstalk Discord. Okay, jumping down into project. So seed gauge, obviously, up for vote. Probably not a whole lot to <clears throat> excuse me, a whole lot to add or or mention here. Uh, Breen, anything you want to cover quick before we uh, before we keep going? Nothing on my end. Gauge seems to be wrapped up from my perspective, other than voting. Sounds good. Okay. Wrap steep. So uh, the remediation or the audit and remediation period, <clears throat> excuse me, got a frog in my throat, has been updated a little bit lengthened, lengthened out. This is, as I understand, this is partially due to line it up with the multi-flow uh, remediation. So as you see, the, the schedule reflects that. Um, everybody's pretty familiar with, <clears throat> with the migration of the project at this point. So won't cover a lot of additional detail unless there's anything extra to, to add. All right, multi-flow. So just one additional week added for, <clears throat> excuse me, for the, uh, to go along with the judging phase of the Code Hawks audit. So not necessarily a major change in schedule, just a little bit of a bump to make sure that we're incorporating the judging phase for that project. Next, Gen Convert. So we've got, we've finally got to the point in the timeline where we've got the end of the timeline on the, uh, on the graph, which is a really little milestone, but it's worth mentioning. Um, so looks like good progress. Obviously, Pizza Man, if there's anything you want to to add, you're more than welcome to, but it seems like things are bumping along. Yeah, maybe the only thing I'll add is that uh, in testing, I ran into this interesting kind of math problem where you can do a convert and you're adding beans to a, a well that has beans and some other you know token. And in some weird cases, that can actually cause the Delta B to go in the opposite direction of PEG, uh, which is not what you would expect. Uh, so I've been working with Brian on trying to figure out uh, what the best way to handle that is, uh, because theoretically, you know, if you're adding beans to a well, you're you're helping br bring bean back up to PEG. But in this case, there's like some weird math edge cases uh, where that ends up not being true with uh, the X well system. So um, yeah, been looking at that. And hopefully we'll get a resolution to that shortly. That is very interesting. Is I mean, can can you guys like explain that to me? Like I'm five. Like what is what is what's the edge case 
where that would happen. It's just, I just, I find that interesting. Yeah, it seems like it's more likely to happen if it's a, like a very large amount is converted. And then, so Pizza Man, I think I lost you. It was Pizza Man, did I lose? Yeah, sorry, I, I saw that I disconnected there. I must have had internet issues. I'm not sure you was right me, as but... you were starting to talk. <laughs> okay, let's see. So yeah, so it seems like it's more likely to happen if the the amount of beans is converted is either very very large or uh, very very small with some other conditions in the in the pool. Uh, and it's not totally clear, you know, what the best way to handle this is. Although the math seems to check out in the fact, that, you know, in that it, it actually is a real thing that's happening. And so, yeah, anyway, just requires some more research to really get to the bottom of what the best way to handle it is. It's interesting. Well, good luck on figuring it out. I'm sure you guys will come to a resolution. Uh, if I can give more context. Sure. You know, fundamentally for a bean to LP convert, you know, what happens is that Bean is given is you know being added to the well and then LP is minted from that. You know what what Pizza Man is saying is that you know there are times where you know you know, intuitively when you're adding beans into the well, delta B should change in the direction we intended to, but uh, sometimes we see the delta B go in the wrong direction. And the reason why is that you know when you think about let's yeah, a well where delta B you know is some value and you know not a peg if a user were to add lp or beans and the non-bean asset into the well in the equal you know proportion of the current well so you know in the same proportion as like the current delta b the the, the delta b would increase right so like mm -hmm. if you had you know a thousand beans and you know one eve and it was five percent alpha peg and you added ten percent more to that in the same proportion, you know, it would the delta B would increase by you know 10%. You're in a negative direction. So what's happening is that when so in certain cases we're adding beans to the well, which you know they would mint LP, and because of the XYK math, there are instances where the amount of beans put into the well is less than the amount of delta B that was you know created so on short uh quote unquote to like fill it up. And, you know, this really occurs when the delta B of the well is massive. You know, when I say massive, I mean, you know, exceeding like half of the uh, the reserves needed to get to peg. But yes. if the ideal state of a well was such that there was 10,000 beans in the well, then this would occur when there was like, you know, let's say like 4,000, you know, less than half of the beans in the well. So this would be a significant delta B deviation. But fundamentally, that's the problem there. And, you know, in the context of generalized convert, this is because in order to generate or in order to calculate the stock penalty for the general for the gen convert, uh, we are currently using or you know, thinking of using the delta B to determine how much uh, bean stock should penalize a user when converting and in the direction where it doesn't want to. You know, given that this delta B doesn't seem to be the most optimal way because like Pizza Man said, you know, there are instances where Beanstalk allows to convert, but still performs this delta B in the inverse direction. You know, a better metric would probably be the delta B uh, over LP. So, you know, now the constraints should be that the delta B over the LP supply should increase or should get better. And thus, you know, this should fix this delta B uh, discrepancy we've seen. Gotcha. So, so if I'm understanding this right, how you're approaching this is going you know, to potentially adjust the part of the convert equation rather than putting like some kind of limiting factor on the convert functionality itself. Yes, yeah, a good question. You know, gen convert is designed such that any convert is valid, but you know what changes is the amount of stock or you know, the amount of penalty you get on mm -hmm. uh, you know, a convert. You, you can think of the uh, a convert or if, if someone wanted to convert bean to LP you know, when the price was below peg, you know, currently within this bean stock system, we do not allow that. But someone could mm -hmm. you know, theoretically just withdraw their beans, manually convert. So you know, add the beans to the well, mint LP, and then deposit into bean stock again. They could still do that you know, currently right now, but they would just forfeit their stock. You know, likewise with the generalized convert, they will be able to perform this bean to LP convert when bean stocks below peg, 
but you know their penalty will be very large if not equivalent to doing the previous actions you know withdrawing all and losing all stock so in this new paradigm gen convert you know kind of allows for all converts if that makes sense but you know mm -hmm. penalizes it based on how much it you know damages or you know how much it affects being stock negatively Gotcha. Yeah. So, yeah. So I, I think I am understanding that, right? The idea is to minimize or, you know, really what you're saying is eliminate any scenarios where a convert would not be allowed by the system to, to have no limitations in terms of what converts are allowed, but really focus on making sure that the, the bonus or penalty is dialed in correctly and, and incentivizing users to convert in, or I should say the reward or the end state is aligned with whatever action the user is trying to take. Meaning if they're trying to convert beans to LP when we're below peg, then there's, you know, there's a defined penalty that goes along with that, the stock penalty go, that goes along with that. But if they're converting the other way, there isn't some, you know, random instance or edge case where they're accidentally causing some type of, of an unintended negative, negative consequence, right? Yeah. I mean, in this case, you know, the goal is that the regular current convert spec and the new generalized convert spec, you know, they should have the same stock penalty if they were to perform the same convert type. So for example, if someone would do a bean to LP convert on a regular convert system. You know, if they do that on the new convert system, they should not be penalized as well if they're able mm -hmm. to do it on the regular one. Because it wouldn't make sense for, you know, someone to perform a bean to LP convert on a generalized convert and get penalized when they could just do the regular convert and not be penalized. Yeah. So this yep. was like the crux of the issue here. You know, although yep. it is an edge case, you know, ideally, you know, the obvious implementation is to make it such that they are equivalent. Yeah. No, good and say to appreciate that from both of you. Jump down to the upgrade package, which again, I know people don't love the name, but here we are. So I guess, Deadman, I'll, I'll open the floor up to you for a minute to see if there's anything you want to add here. I, you know, obviously we've got you know just some general schedule update, but is there anything else you want to talk through? Yeah, of course. So as you mentioned, the audit is uh, underway right now. I'm currently helping uh, auditors any way I can, you know, to support them, find any bugs that may have occurred in the code. I was uh, mainly working on uh, policing the code prior to the audit. Uh, there was a little bit of, you know, of interconnection between components in regards to the top, top rate chains. But with some math, we got that figured out. And yeah, I believe we're ready to go now. We shall see the results in about two weeks. Hopefully the auditors are pretty familiar with the protocol after like two consecutive audits. So we shall see. But yeah. No, I appreciate that. And, and agree on the auditor's familiarity. Does sound just just kind of watching the chats, it seems like there's some let's call it like muscle memory building with the auditors. So that is I think that is a good sign in general. You know, as we continue to go through these audit processes with Cypherin and Coke specifically, yeah, it does seem like there's a growing familiarity and 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 I'm going to say appreciation too. It seems like um, the team is it seems like the Cypherin team, the the Code Hawks team is uh, is has a yeah just a, a good appreciation and and a generally positive attitude towards the the Beanstalk code base too. So that's I think that that bodes well. Yeah, and the auditors seem like genuinely excited to work on Beanstalk. Yeah, agreed. That's that's exactly what what I see in the chats. Well, thank you. All right, secure Beanstalk is is bumping right along. I didn't see under. No, I don't see them in the in the in the meeting. But yeah, continuing work. And at this point, essentially just waiting for uh, for the Codehawks team to have availability to go through and do the audit there. And we'll keep moving on after that process. And Tractor, again, still on hold. And uh, like you said, once what's Funner gets freed up, I, I imagine, well, so for what it's worth, my guess, and I have not talked to Funder here over the last week or so, but I'm going to guess that knowing that they have been working off and on on Tractor here for a while, I'm going to guess that since they've got some room wait, while they're waiting on uh, the current audits, they're probably working on Tractor as as we speak. So that's probably on me. I will, I'll loop back with them and see if we should update the tractor schedule and get that back, back rolling for, I'll have it for the next, the next down meeting.
Okay, I put in a, a slide for Subgraph and other updates, and Soil King was kind enough to to join us. So you said that said that you're close, no major updates, but you're you're getting close. Yeah, that's right. So um, just just a little bit. Well, mostly I kind of talked about what I've been working on at the at the last call and just kind of that that piece of upgrades to the subgraph. A lot of additional analytics coming coming to the UI. We're looking to deploy it probably in the next couple of days. Uh, just kind of finalizing things up on the UI side. So definitely be on the lookout for that, and you know I'll make sure to let you and everyone else know when when that's on, and we can. Uh, we can direct people to to look at those those new charts. Sounds great. Yeah, let me know. We'll get, get announcements out. We'll we'll make a big deal out of it. So appreciate that. And yeah, keep me up to date. Okay. Want to open the floor up? See if there are any questions, thoughts, concerns from the DAO. I'm keeping an eye on the chats, and it looks like doesn't look like I'm seeing anything from the Barnyard chat or for the chat for the voice channel. But yeah, if anybody has any questions, thoughts, concerns, it's the floor is yours. See Ox Rat typing. And Silo Chad, GM Silo Chad. All right. So Silo asks, what are the rest of the team up to? Guy, Publius, etc. So I have not spoke with with Ben or Brendan here in the last couple of days. Um, I think they were. I think they were traveling, but not totally sure. And I know that I, I know that a guy is actually on a he's on a plane right now, and actually he sends his apologies for not being able to join us. But yeah, that's that's about all I know at the moment as to what they're up to. Very right. If it's a Nepal trip, I I do not know. Box wrap typing. I'll give you a moment here. Have we discussed automating deposits into the silo? Ox rat asks. So I do not have a great answer for that. So I think the I think the any type of like automatic or automated components. I, I don't know if that would necessarily fall under the purview of Tractor. I do not know if we've talked about automating deposits outside of potentially setting up functionality within, within Tractor to execute those. Oh, specifically from for I am not sure, but I can take that away as a question. Harry asks where Manifold is. I do not know. Harry also asks, what do we do if we can't withdraw our root deposits from a few years ago? I also do not have an answer for that. I uh, I am I haven't been on the root UI or had interaction with root in a very long time. I'm I'm not sure. I again that's something else I could take away. I can see if I can find an answer when it comes to root stuff. I just I, I don't know where the so for what it's worth, I think Crypto Girl is spam perfect. Somebody just got it. Thank you to whoever kicked that. Yeah, thank you, Soul King. Yeah, again I can ask about that, Harry. I I, I'm not sure if we're going to have any good information about Root. Really not sure. Any other questions or items? Okay. All right. We'll see nothing new. I'll take that question away to uh, to see if we can get something a little bit more specific for you. Harry, I will, I will see what we can do about those two questions that you had about Manifold and Root. And yeah, we'll, uh, we'll loop back with what we can. And thanks for joining us. Appreciate everybody's time. And if anybody else has any questions or anything comes up, feel free to tag me in the Discord. And we will take this recording. We'll put it up here over the next day or so. Thanks, everybody. Appreciate your time.